Ted Phillips saying that the Bears were, were an enviable situation. So, I mean, and it makes – I understand why you were uh, kind of upset with that because, one, and I hate to say this about anybody, he came off during that interview or that day as the most smug out of the four, yeah. uh-huh. to say the least. So what were your yeah. thoughts on Ted Phillips saying that the Bears, I guess, were, are an enviable situation for anybody out there wanting to come and join this franchise? That was so condescending. <laughs> I mean, like it is for 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 him to say that to you, that Ted Phillips speaks to the fans once a year. It is after the season. And for him to make that part of his message to the fans that we have a great culture, one that is the envy of every team in the NFL, when the starting quarterback said three days ago, we still need to work on building a championship culture. Mm. Who who's buying that? What Bears fan is buying that their culture inside Hallis Hall is A, good, and B, matters? Like, that's the thing. It doesn't matter to most fans that on the business side of things, the Bears do have a good culture, which they do. I give them credit for that. But when you're speaking to fans who are frustrated with the state of the team, that is not something that needed to be brought up in an opening statement. And then to have the gall to say it's the envy it's the kind of culture every other team in the NFL strives for. Well, wouldn't you rather have the Packers culture that wins? Wouldn't you rather have the Patriots culture that wins? Wouldn't you rather have the Rams culture that wins, not the Bears culture that goes eight and eight? I mean, that to me, that that was that was one of the biggest losses the Bears took in a press conference full of losses. <laughs> Listen, even going along the pile of what you're saying, and George McCaxi mentioned this, and he, someone asked him the question, and I was happy because I was going to ask you, and they asked him, well, who are the families of the football organizations that you're connected to? And two mm-hmm. of the ones that stood out, he mentioned the Moras of the Giants, and he also mentions the Roonies of the Steelers. I'm much, and listen, and I, I don't really want the Giants culture, but they got two Super Bowls in the last 10, 15 years, so I'll take it. I'm, I, I'd, a lot, I'd much more want the Steelers culture because – they're always in contention to some degree, you know, and, and it, the, when he said that, I really want to ask George McCaskey, what do they really tell you? Because in a way, yeah. I don't feel like they want you to have their culture because. Yes. Yes. It, it, Thank it, you. It, that's how like, I feel like they want to keep you. And I'm not I'm, I'm joking. But being that this is one of the, the charter franchises in the league, I think those those teams like the fact that the Bears aren't on the plateau that they should be. I mean, the other family that. The Bidwells, the the longtime owners of the the, the Cardinals. Cardinals. And look, while I'm not, I don't think that the Maras want anything bad for the Chicago Bears. Because also, by the way, when the Bears are good, the NFL makes more money. True, true. But the optics, again, this is, this press conferences are about optics. The optics of George McCaskey saying before anyone else who he consults with, the Maras, the Roonies, and the Bidwells was not good. Those, that is not good optics to say you consult with your friends around the league for counsel on these decisions. When, like you you said, Ken, like, you know, a lot of us have thought, well, wait a minute. Wouldn't the Maras want the Bears to not be competitive? And wouldn't the Bidwells be okay if the Bears aren't competitive? Because that's help, that, that will help those franchises ultimately get into the playoffs and make more money instead of the Bears. So... That the the optics of that were were not good. Um, again, the Bears took a lot of L's on Wednesday. That was <laughs> another one. Listen, what were your thoughts when George McCaskey said that Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy were growing in their roles? Matt Nagy, I believe, like that. Okay. I am. I have. I believe that Matt Nagy can grow in his role as a head coach. He's only been doing it for three years. He still is relatively young. Head coaches can grow when you talk about the first three years to the next three or four, that Mm. does happen. Um, With Ryan Pace, six years is a long time. Mm. And another L was Ted Phillips saying, well, if you break it up, you know, 15 to 17 and then 18 to 20, we've shown tremendous progress in 18 to 20. You're kind of leaving out the most important part, which is the 2017 draft. (laughs) And, Yes, the Bears have shown progress because what Ryan Pace took over in 2015 was a disaster. But progress to what end? Ryan Pace was always going to show progress, I think, because it was just so bad, you know, five, six years ago. But have the Bears shown the progress that merits warranting keeping your job? Or is it like 
you showed progress because you went from getting an F on a test to a D plus on a test. Like, it, does that really prove anything to anyone? No, um, only short, only short school bus. Uh, and I hate to be facetious like that, but no. I'm like, if my kid came and told me that, I'd be very upset with him to say at least my oldest child. Because uh, one, you shouldn't have got the F, but that D, I mean, I'll be heated, to be honest with you, yeah. if my child came in with a D plus and expected that to be looked at as growth. But sticking with that, Ted Phillips had mentioned that Nagy and Pace were able to self-reflect. And I, you mentioned that you saw growth in Nagy, and, 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 and that he has a smaller sample size uh, from being a head coach, also being a short-time offensive coordinator as far as calling the plays in Kansas City to compare to Ryan's pace six years. But have you seen them being able to self-reflect and also make changes uh, over the last? Listen, the goal of Ted Phillips over the last three years. How about we use Ted Phillips uh, analogy, I mean, the thought process yeah. as far as at the time? I don't know, because we didn't get any straight answers. Um, when Mark Potash from the Chicago Sun-Times asked Ryan Pace directly, what did you learn about your misevaluation of the quarterback class in 2017? Pace said, oh, we're looking forward. And he didn't answer the question. Mm -hmm. You know, that would have been a moment for Ryan Pace to engender some trust within the fan base and say, Look, I think it's pretty obvious that we we drafted the wrong quarterback. We appreciate everything Mitchell has done for us, but I I did not get that right. If he had just said that and admitted it, I think Bears fans would be a lot. They would be not okay, but there wouldn't be this doom and gloom about Ryan Pace taking another quarterback that maybe there is right now. Because I don't know if Ryan Pace has learned from what he did in 2017 and how he fell in love with one guy over two Hall of Fame talents, one of whom in Deshaun Watson was just the obvious choice. Correct. And mm -hmm. I, I don't know if Ryan Pace has learned from that. I really don't. That Davis show right here with JJ Stankovich. Follow him at JJ Stankovich. You can always check him out on the Undercitter Under Sitter podcast. Shout out to our boy Tony Gill. Uh, listen, uh, even sticking with that, and you, you're closer to this than a lot of us. It's when it comes to scouting, have, have, have has there been any discussion and changes and perhaps, because one thing that in 2017 when Mitch was drafted and they moved up and made that deal with the 49ers, it, he, Ryan Pace alluded to there was consensus in the room. He, 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 he gave off the, 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 the feeling that he didn't pressure anybody. He had his guy and everybody else in the room had his guy also. Has there been any change with the people in the room to address that situation? Perhaps, okay, bringing out somebody else who's good at picking that situation. And maybe Ryan Pace, knowing he's weak, he's allowing that person to take center stage and to handle that. Because with other positions, Ryan Pace has been better. Uh, not that I know of. Um, hmm. You know, I, I think, like, the, the Bears have in their, their power structure in that front office um, – you know, I think probably the best quote unquote outside voice would be Champ Kelly, a guy who's a really smart guy, uh, was a finalist for the Denver Broncos GM job before they hired uh, the guy from the Vikings. You know, he, he's not a guy who came up with Ryan Pace like Josh Lucas, his director of player personnel is. Um, and the other thing with that, with the, the consensus in the room, well, you excluded your head coach from the room. Mm. Like yeah. your head coach wanted Deshaun Watson. and there, there, there was not consensus with Mitch because the head coach, again, wanted Deshaun Watson. It's been reported that Dave Ragone wanted Deshaun Watson. Really? You didn't listen to him. So, no, there, no, there was no consensus. I, didn't, I, knew, I knew Fox wasn't consulted, but I, 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 you know what? I never even thought of who he wanted because we were so unhappy with John Fox at that time, and that was unfair by me to really think about. I never even thought about that. It, it's been reported multiple times. I've heard the same thing. Uh, from people close to Fox, that he he wanted Deshaun Watson. And mm. the pace didn't listen to him. I, I wrote a column about this before the Texans game um, that was basically just like, you know what, Ryan Pace should have fired John Fox after the 2016 season because if you're going to go take a swing at quarterback, you should probably listen to the people coaching that quarterback. Right. But Pace didn't. And their, their misevaluation – like what I also would have liked to hear from Ryan Pace, because this has been reported, uh, Dan Weeder and Rich Campbell from the Chicago Tribune uh, did a great job reporting this, Dan, over the last year or so, is that the Bears did not scout Deshaun Watson as heavily as they should have. They did not go down as many paths with him as they could have. And that was a miss. The Bears essentially had made up their mind that they did not want Deshaun Watson. The Bears front office, I should say, the coaching staff, they wanted him and 
they, they didn't listen to the coaching staff. And if Ryan Pace had just respected John Fox's opinion to mm-hmm. a point where maybe it is more of a discussion, maybe you do scout him further, you probably would have fallen in love with him too. Because you know who's a really great quarterback and who already was a great quarterback in college was Deshaun Watson. Yes. And now the Bears are going down this path again where they're going to be drafting a quarterback most likely, maybe even trading up for another one in April. Do we know if Ryan Pace has learned anything? To go back to your question, I don't know. Do we know if his scouting structure has learned anything? I don't know. I really don't. 